Hello, Big Think Gamers, and welcome back to a Big Think Mailbag. We're very excited, as always, to answer your questions. Uh, we have the full crew with us. We got Bob from Gigaboots. Hey, guys. KZ from KZExcellent.com. Bark, bark. And Mr. Feel from Twitter. Twitter.com slash Mr. Feels Wild Ride, twitch.tv slash Mr. Feels Wild Ride, patreon.com slash TV podcast. <laughs> well, we've got a few questions. I Thanks guess we should in everybody. get to it. <laughs> uh, first question comes from Clort. Clort says, hello, swole brain boyos. In the event that Microsoft were to be so thoroughly eviscerated that they were to bow out of the games and console industry together, is there any publisher slash company that you believe could fill the space and offer better competition against Sony and or Nintendo? Additionally, do you think a third competitor like Microsoft plays an important role in keeping Sony and Nintendo from complacency, or do you think the industry would be healthy enough without them? Love the content. Hope you're all managing to stay sane in these more and more insane times. Please look forward to our spam segment. Uh... Also, you're cowards for adding Demolition Man to the cursed content poll. Very unpoggers. Hey, we are adding more options. We believe in democracy this time. You didn't have to vote for it. <laughs> um, this time. <laughs> this time. Let's see. Uh, there's a lot to tackle here. Um, I think Microsoft's strategy currently is very similar to what a third... Uh, a new third company like Amazon or Google would bring in. Uh, let's pretend Google's not already in the game industry because they basically aren't. Um, wherein they just mean? try to money hat and uh, fairly, thoroughly fund uh, freebies or low cost uh, benefits to the consumers on their platform. Uh, of course, I'm referencing the $1 buy in to Game Pass Ultimate that got me three years of it. Um, Technically, if you add up everything I bought, it was something like a hundred bucks got me three years of every first party game from them, along with a bunch of other things like Streets of Rage and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know if anyone else would be able to provide more of a challenge. Does anyone else have any uh, contend uh, contenders? Hmm. There's Apple. I don't oh. feel like they would do it, but... <laughs> They're there. Yeah, I feel like it took an insanely long time for a Apple to recognize that games on their platform are important. They should do a subscription model for that. Um, they keep doing this thing where they're trying to enter, where they're in the product planning stage of entering the console business, and they just never do. Right. That's why I don't have confidence in it actually happening, but they right. don't interest, which is more than a lot of companies. True. Um Damn. What was that, Casey? Amazon. What about them? They could do it. <laughs> They'd try, but no, they couldn't. You seem to not even get through that sentence all right, my friend. Uh, well, here's how my brain went. My brain went, what, like, you know, publisher slash developer chunk would try to make a console? And then my brain just defaulted to what's the worst option and just went Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> they invented then, console gaming, you know. They, they probably they did. They're going to invent. Game. They're going to invent console gaming. They're going to buy Microsoft somehow, and then they're going to say they invented online gaming with Xbox Live. I I want to say that it, as on entered, they'd call it the uh, the Kindle box. <laughs> wow. Oh. Uh, how, when, why wouldn't they call it like something to do with the Amazon Fire? It's a fireplace. I mean, the yeah. They would Amazon call it the Amazon Inferno. Fireplace. <laughs> Amazon Inferno, maybe not. <laughs> Considering that they have, like, the Amazon Echo and then the Echo Dot, it'd be called something real fucking dumb. Amazon Box. <laughs> cube. The Amazon Cube. It's just the Amazon Ooh. Box is hilarious because it's like, yeah, that's what all the stuff that I order from Amazon comes in. Yeah. What do you comes, mean you want me to buy one? Comes in the oh Amazon Oh my god, box. that that would be it, and that would be that would be their fucking explanation. Just like when you get something from Amazon, mm -hmm. Amazon Box includes so many wonderful things you're going to want. 
Give me your blood. It's it's they're gonna try to do something oh. whimsical like the George Clooney coffee ad that SNL parodied years ago, where it's just like, Hey, what's you got an Amazon box? And he's like, Of course I do. And he's like, No, that and he points under the and he goes, Oh yeah, the Amazon box. And they're gonna get a really high profile celebrity to shill it because they're Amazon and they have way too much fucking money. Vin Diesel. Um Yeah, I I think Amazon would enter the market. I don't think they would actually challenge them. I don't know if they would like That's, all all these other companies. I worry that they would try and do a Stadia like system where it's not even a system, and they don't want to try. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That um, the thing is, You're, even if they do want to try, Bob, uh -huh. because they're a corporation and they don't actually have a sentient thought like that. It's more like they start a bunch of initiatives, but they didn't hire the correct staff and. They don't have the technical know-how, and there's no way they can get it. Uh, that's kind of the problem, right? Like, the Stadia is allegedly the most powerful console on the market, but kind of <laughs> runs games like shit, and by the end of this year, it looks like a complete and utter joke. Well, I don't know what you mean, Dan. Uh, uh, according to Xbox fanboys, it's more powerful than the PS5. According to Stadia fanboys, uh, every year or every few months, Stadia will roll out a new higher-profile SKU just to not lose. Yeah. This was said by uh, an absolute loon on Twitter. Yeah, I remember reading that. <laughs> Bob lost it. He was like, this dude's this dude's implying that they're just going to have four different hardware SKUs like at a time, <laughs> constantly rolling out new ones just so they have more teraflops. Uh, no, that's Xbox. That's kind of how it feels a little bit. But uh, but yeah, at least if Amazon did their own box, that they already have a studio that makes games instead of all right, we're going to release this and maybe we'll make a studio for games. I think they've made one game. Yeah. No, Dan. That's 100% more than Google. That's they, They've made two. One just got, you know, strangled the desk before it came out. That's true. They put yeah, it in so the I'm meat grinder. I'm not counting that one. I don't know what you're talking you, about. You, that you one's better you than can't. Crucible. It is. <laughs> Let's not talk about things we're talking about later. <laughs> You can't say I have three children. Oh, two of them were stillborn, though. Yeah, I don't want to think about them. Okay, I don't want to think about Breakaway. Look, man, that game was all right. It wasn't great, but it certainly is better than um Crucible. Also, you guys are forgetting the Grand Tour game, the episodic racing oh game God. based on the Amazon Prime TV show, The Grand Tour. That's three different layers of doesn't actually exist. <laughs> uh, I apologize for mentioning Amazon. It's on PS4 and Xbox One. You can buy it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Time for technically, you to give it a chance. Anyone could do any number of things. They just aren't doing them. Just like I'm not going to buy that and no one else <laughs> is either. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I... I, I think Microsoft does a pretty weak job of uh, providing sincere competition for Nintendo and Sony, um, but they do a better job than I think anyone else is going to come in and do. Obviously, NVIDIA has ties to Nintendo right now, so they would absolutely destroy their business relationship with Nintendo if they were to do that, and yet I still think they might. Huh. Yeah, because it was like the other thing that's more feasible is one of these big graphics cards manufacturers getting into the console game, but they're they're selling to these guys. So right, AMD it's would crazy. AMD wouldn't at all. Um, the Nvidia already has done multiple attempts at this sort of thing with the Shield. Yes, hell, the Switch is just a Shield-like platform with much better drivers and no Android per se. Um, <laughs> And any number of other things that make it less a piece of shit. If you're going to do anything, if anyone's going to join the console market, they can't use Android. <laughs> I, I I think history has shown that. Yeah, the Oya just got blammed out of existence. <laughs> Enough hmm. people downvoted it and it disappeared. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Is it? No. I think I've used an Oya, so no. No. <laughs> it had a good controller. No, it did. It stopped saying that. It had a nice platform. No, it didn't. Stop saying that. It had potential. Eh, the idea of it's all right. <laughs> hey, I found something. It's a, it had about as much potential as the Tapwave Zodiac. Uh, okay, I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, it had about asshole. as much potential as the Game Park 32. Shut the fuck up. Move on. <laughs> uh, so, I think if anything... 
any company has the potential to do this and not just humiliate themselves and be instantly eviscerated. Uh, Samsung. I mean, they do have the means to produce hardware. They have a lot of money and generally seem to be competent. Generally speaking, yeah, they can make a mean piece of hardware, but the problem is, and this is what Google's running into, if you don't have a proper SDK and you don't have all these other things to make developing games on your platform easier and make porting things to your platform easier and make your platform itself better, um, it doesn't it doesn't help. You know, basically only the giga brains in the game development community will be able to put shit out on your platform, and uh, even then, they're not gonna. Just to fuck with well, KZ, see, they're, I'm they're, posting see, this image of the game Park 32. Okay, so oh. uh, Microsoft partnered with Samsung for some stupid what streaming bullshit. What the bull fuck is this? That's the game Park 32, did I not? <laughs> you know, maybe you know it by its other name, GP32? Is that ringing any bells? No, no, it's not. It's it's really not. It's funny because uh, it, it feels literally talking about a South Korean electronics manufacturer right now, and that's where this was made. Oh my god. Samsung will just buy the Xbox branding and take it over. I think Microsoft would do that deal if they wanted to get out of the business wholesale, which honestly, I think that would be better than them straddling two different worlds like I see them doing. You know, they're eventually Xbox is going to be a brand on PC and uh, a bad one. It'll yeah, it'll be the brand that says Xbox Game Studios after you buy a game on yeah. Steam. That's that's my cynical Microsoft is making so many bad moves that it gets worse for them because we just had numbers on things come out and it looks really fucking dire for Microsoft on a sales side for games as of late, but uh you know, refer to earlier this week's big thing to mention for that news. <laughs> uh did anyone want to say anything else? Uh, well, wait, wait, <laughs> hold on. Did you say to look forward to this week's on this? Yeah, I'm putting this out next Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, whenever it's a mailbag, I'm like, are you talking about the thing they're going to see three months beforehand? Like... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> actually, this might be an August show for all I know. <laughs> We've had that happen. We've had yes. it pushed back like two whole months, you know? Um, yeah. One, one thing before we move on. I sure. think that, I think it's important for there to be some, another company to keep Sony in check. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I, I owned a PS3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's sad to see this. But, you know, Atari and Sega, they're just going to make their own consoles again. It'll be fine. Sega is the last <laughs> company I see. I know. Because here's the weird thing. Atari, like, didn't isn't Atari already doing that? Yes. Yes, we it's don't. Sorry. Mm. We don't talk about Ponzi schemes here on uh, Gigaboot, so we're not going to talk about the Atari thing. We talk about Stadia all the time. Oh fuck! Yeah, we could talk about the Atari BCS. <laughs> no. <laughs> Game stream connect like never before. I'm on their website right now. I'm gonna test feel. No one else say anything. Feel. Yes. What's the name of that platform that was a uh, had a rotary dial on it? The portable gaming machine that still hasn't launched. It has like a crank. Oh, what? <laughs> Let me think. I must have heard of it. Yeah, we covered it on Big Think. It's got a crank. Oh, you, oh, oh a cr the crank. That's the play date. Yeah, there we go. Okay, <laughs> he good, he, it, good job. It Classic doesn't have a rotary. It, do, it does not have a rotary dial. That's what got me confused. Sorry, I crank. said I said rotary dial, and you imagined like an old telephone. And I was like, no, yes, it's, it's more like, a crank. What I was like, what fucking weird thing from two thousand one that failed is he talking about? <laughs> right? I love that Game Park Thirty Two has got everyone in this mindset. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's called it's called the play date. I thought it was supposed to be out by now, but I guess it fell off a cliff. Uh it's not out. I feel like someone would have said something at some point if it was out. Yep. You would expect The Verge or someone else to have a video that showed up in my feed. People would have tweeted saying, hey, when are you buying it? And then I would have been like, right now, haha, ha, you're real owned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on their website. Let's see if it has any sort of release plan. It does not appear to. That sounds about right. Wow. Uh, so I guess we'll move on. It will ship in 2020. <laughs> sure. Sure it will. I'll believe them. The world's only unironic Gary Busey stan writes in, Dear sizable ah. brain boys, I work for a certain large brown shipping company 
And one of the things I've noticed with the rise of working at home due to certain events is that we've seen an increase in gaming chairs. This made me think about how often I see things branded as being for gamers and how often they are absolute trash. Have any of you bought anything branded for gaming? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? Good or bad? Thank you. <laughs> this seems like he's asking us to plug these chairs. You know, it does yeah, perfectly to, poise. To say, who's the dirtbag that bought bought those chairs? Uh, these DX Hello. racers are great. Hello. <laughs> DX I, think racer I'm the, I think I'm the only one on this network who just has a normal office chair. What a That's right. True, but like at the same time, the the DX racer I sit in and the like back pillow it comes with actually helped my massive back problems I was having leading up to that. Keep in mind, I've always owned piece of shit chairs for my desk. So, you know, that's one element of it. Another element is I was sleeping like two to three hours a night. But uh, yeah, no, these DX racers are really nice. We have no sort of sponsorship deal with them. So don't even don't be like, oh, I'm going to go buy it to support Gigaboots. Don't don't do that. We should have a deal with them. We, we should. Don't. We got like, what was it? It was like four or five different people bought it last year because we bought it and it was really good. Maybe yeah. it was two years ago. Use code name Giga for 10%. Yeah, I got, I got mine two years ago. Um, As for things that are branded gaming, I know, you know, when it comes to mice, like gaming mice, that's often a pretty good thing because that'll imply a certain level of responsiveness. Of course, there are good and bad ones. Uh, monitors are sometimes really good for, like, fast refresh rate. Uh, basically, anything with the ROG label from uh, Asus, which stands for Republic of Gamers, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> ROG is actually a pretty good line of products, uh, by and large, like, uh, like their motherboards and um, monitors and other things. Um, and I know uh, keyboards are the same way as these other things I'm mentioning. Uh, I don't think my keyboard's branded uh, a gamer thing. It's an alright build of keyboard. I just found out I don't like Cherry MX Reds, and then I stuck with it for the longest time because it's expensive, and uh, what am I going to do? Return it and buy a different keyboard and find out I don't like that one either? <laughs> it's an alright keyboard. It makes a loud sound. Um... I can't think of any other gaming products that I've had experiences Dan, with. Didn't we buy some sort of gaming food that was like this pouch of did little puff balls? Did you buy the cashews of growth? chaos? Did you buy the cashews of chaos? We did not buy the what? cashews. What are you? What are you talking about? Oh, okay, Z, you haven't known, seen. Okay, let me let me link it to you right now. God, God damn it. <laughs> One, I hate how excited you are. Two, this sounds like the worst. I do seem to recall us eating some they sort of gamer They got some StarCraft guy. They wow. got some StarCraft guy. Wow. Wow. Gamer food. Seeds, of, Seeds vi of victory. <laughs> uh, yes. Cashews of chaos. Nuts of Nuts destruction. Of destruction. <laughs> These are insane. Um, hey, we need to get, we, you need to buy these for Donkey Kong month. <laughs> I have purchased an even more insane thing. Okay. What? I bought the fucking Gillette Fusion Gamer Razor. <laughs> oh my god. When it came out in 2009. Was it good? Oh. Yeah, it was fine, but the fact I'm like, oh, it's gonna be funny. I'm gonna buy the Gillette Fusion Gamer Razor. I don't exactly understand how it's gamer. But, but it has a battery in it that, that makes it produce micro pulses that reduce friction, it says. Latency. <laughs> mm. Low latency is important when you're shaving. It's not a so proper razor. But yeah, I bought the fucking razor. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Bob, it looks like we cannot get this food anymore. We can no longer see sow the seeds of victory. <laughs> okay, that's good. Or reap the cashews of chaos. Cashews of chaos. This is insane. I just wanted to imagine this just 4 a.m. You're playing Donkey Kong 64 like you want some nuts of destruction, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's like a bad intro to a porno. I don't <laughs> I I worry that they're dusted in literal caffeine. Probably. Probably. Probably like I cayenne pepper any... and caffeine. 
I don't think they're anything but just normal shit that they put a uh they put gamer branding on. But I did find this this cookbook that I think Dan needs to purchase and uh may use for Gigaboots Eats. Hmm, what's that? Snack hacks over one hundred fast and delicious recipes for gamers, coders, freaks, and geeks. <laughs> okay, two things. One this cover is the worst thing I've ever goddamn seen. <laughs> I'm going to need so you to edit this into the podcast video. <laughs> I'm trying to save this image so I can do that. You know what? They're just going to get the lowest res version of this. That's going to have to be okay. It's insane. Why is this a thing? <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the worst. Interviews, recipes, and stories from pro gamer West Balls and computer game voice stars Cass Anvar, Robin Atkin Dowds. <laughs> Um, so I'm willing to bet that this does not have putting honey roasted peanuts in a Coke. So this is a, this is an inferior book. This is garbage. I, how is it still for sale? One, two, how is it only 828 and it's a hard cover? Like, <laughs> no one, nobody wants it Two, It's not even a year old, Dan. Yeah. yeah it came out I would last be gone. Year. It came out uh, last year and this shit doesn't have like a Kindle she's, version. She's what holding the a 360 controller and it came out last year. That's insane. What? What? Whatever. She, she, she got stories from Travis touchdown in here. It's important. That doesn't how that's not a person. <laughs> yeah. The voice actor. God, this is so fucking ridiculous because it's like this 60-year-old woman. This is the most condemning thing so far. One moment. I'm saving it. Here you guys go so that way you can see what I'm looking at. Customers who viewed this also viewed uh, it's all women's clothing. <laughs> yeah, what? It's one hey, pair she, of she, running shoes for men. I guess some socks for men. Oh, this is the most depressing insight I've ever been giving. Dan, the other books written by the same person are Babylon Confidential, a memoir of love, sex, and addiction, uh, alongside <laughs> Journeys, inspirational stories of recovery from alcohol addiction using a breakthrough scientific method, all written by the same woman. Is is the breakthrough scientific? Oh, wow, that one actually came out earlier this year. Is the breakthrough scientific method botulism? Because it seems to be all over her face. <laughs> That's not. killing me. No, no, not when, not with this book cover, I man. I, I will not be nice when it is seventy percent of the book cover. But it's okay, Dan. She's a I, voice I, actress. I, I I can't handle it. What feels yeah. like the meanest one on our podcast and always has to go be nice. Uh, Claudia's intro, My Secret Life is a Voice Acting Food Hacker. Oh, God! Uh, she's voiced in uh, Halo, Minecraft, or sorry, Warcraft, Skyrim, Call of Duty. Uh, uh, this is... This, this question went Ari. Yeah. This is bad. This is a level of knowledge I never needed. This is... Ever. <laughs> this is wonderful. Uh, really glad. Thank you for your question. <laughs> the world only unironic with... Gary Busey stand. Oh, <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Fucking Gary Busey's just delivering. Those good, the chairs are good. Don't, don't listen to anything Feel says. <laughs> oh, and my answer is nothing. I can't think of a single fucking product. The chairs are good. I have never once besmirched the chair. Yeah, that was that was yeah, KZ the, being jealous. I, I'm sorry. I was I was referring to don't don't <laughs> listen to his book recommendations. Shut the, shut uh, the okay. fuck up, Dan. Um, also, the keyboards are good. Like I have a Coast Corsair gamer branded one. It's it's nice as a keyboard. Uh, yeah, I notice whenever it's a PC parts manufacturer and they have a gaming brand, it usually is pretty good. Like if they have a long history of making PC parts, not just some out of nowhere. Oh man, what was the name of that terrible graphics card I bought, Bob? Wasn't it like Biofuse? Yeah, something like that. It was insane. <laughs> Being poor sucks, everyone. I um, I'm, I'm remembering the gaming chair that GameStop sold, and like that was awful. Oh, that was the worst. Was it? Was it? Was it that? Was it one of those stupid fucking ones that's like a rocking chair that sits on the ground and has like vibrators in it? I mean, nope. they sold that at one point, the rocker. Oh. Yeah, the rocker were the thing a few years back, but I'm talking about the one where they tried to be like a de or a typical chair like our DX racers. 
And it was just like a super cheapo version. Of course it was. Probably ex- probably explodes and fucking destroys your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we? Next question comes from Liam Fun. Greetings, Gigabrains hidden in the think. Recently, the Switch port of Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 came out alongside a couple DLC characters and a new patch. The first support the game has seen in years. Yeah, it gets like three years old. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, I was surprised this poor habit. I didn't even hear of it. Uh, However, much to the community's dismay, the new patch has broken Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. (laughs) (laughs) No! Universal, Universal mechanics were nerfed. Tons of characters lost tools. The new DLC characters are awful. And to top it all off, the game is now suffering from crashing bugs that we're pretty sure weren't there before. It got so bad that the fans launched a modding project to fix the game and add buffs of their own. This may have the unfortunate side effect of leaving the console skews in the dust, but that can't be helped. At least Namco is taking feedback on the situation. Instability in a game that's being steadily patched is expected by now, but this takes, quote, nerfing fighting games, end quote, to a whole new level. While this mess gets sorted out, can you guys recall a time when a patch or major update made a game markedly worse? Doom Eternal notwithstanding. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say during early PS3 when there was like, oh, hey, the new firmware is up. Uh, it adds a feature you really cared about. It can also break your system. That was a real rough time. <laughs> <laughs> And you have to sign the, the thing when you download mm-hmm. saying, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Break by shit, I guess. That was like and a good Dan, three Every years. time Dan was like, please don't. I'm no. signing it, but don't. No, please. Ugh. That was not a great time for firmware updates on consoles. No. I'm glad we're way past that sort of thing. Um, Games, though. Uh, Okay, so this is a little weird because it wasn't technically a patch. It's technically a retooled version for console, but uh, Bunny Must Die on the PS4 does some balance changes that I fucking hate for Chelsea. Absolutely abhor it. Uh, as for things that <laughs> things that I psychopathically still hang on to years later that are patches. Yeah. Killzone 2's shotgun was broken at launch. And if you held the button that turned on the flashlight, you literally <laughs> auto-aimed. So I would go around the corner, hold the flashlight, and push the fire button and just kill everyone on impact. <laughs> they they patched that out like a week and a half after launch. How dare I was, they? I was very upset. <laughs> no. <laughs> that shit was so hilarious. Everyone's like, good, they stopped dead, and I'm like, no, I need a win. <laughs> uh, man, I, I'm gonna think on it some more. Uh, KZ, do you have any uh, patches that you uh, remember breaking games, making them unstable, or changing the balance so much that you got mad? Um, I couldn't, so I just googled them to try and remember things, and even then, nothing really, <laughs> nothing really came to mind. Uh, it did. It did remind me upon looking at a list here that they fucking patched microtransactions into MGS Five. These insane people. Yeah, they did that. Uh, that was real great. Um, mm-hmm. you know there are probably countless Blizzard stories, but uh, on behalf of Tosh, I'll tell the story of how she used to play Heroes of the Storm, and then they destroyed Brightwing like it was fucking Bane destroying Batman. Oh, yeah. They they fucking ruined that character. Uh, It was not great, and basically anyone who played Brightwing fucking hated it. (laughs) Oh, Yeah, Uh, I think there's... This this is basically the Blizzard hour. I know. (laughs) You could put Blizzard on blast for so many games. Oh, oh God, every example I have almost is a Blizzard (laughs) game. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. I'm I'm just sitting here trying to think of anything else. Like what? They've done nothing wrong. Yeah, no, that was why I was struggling at all, because my first thought was Overwatch. My second thought was Heroes of the Storm. You you see, the I didn't want to say Overwatch because I'm like, eh, eh. They patched it like 8,500 times, so which one do I choose? Yeah, it's it's hard to choose. Was it the first or second time they remade Symmetra? (laughs) (laughs) Do I pick the time they just made Mercy into a different character? 
Yeah, there's there's when when McCree could press one button and take out any tank in one hit. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it seems ideal. I don't, even, when they... I don't even play that asshole, and I thought that was an integral part of the game. <laughs> well, an integral part is to run up to Fat Man, <laughs> yes. fan the hammer, and he just unloads the clip into his gut and does 1,000 damage. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was the best thing. He, he's the counter to Roadhog. <laughs> hey, I can't believe that for over a year they kept Hanzo's stupid... Uh, this arrow shoots out, and then it splits into multiple. It's good for, you know, large areas to grab people, or just shoot at your feet and kill any character in the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and because for every whole, shot will hit them. <laughs> and for his ult, uh, Hanzo's ultimate is he captures the point. He doesn't have to stand there. He can just aim it <laughs> vaguely in the direction of the point he captures. You could just instantly. spawn and then just <laughs> shoot in the direction where you know people are doing shit. Uh... I was shocked that Genji never got buffed. I felt like he was not exactly the strongest character, which is why so many Genji mains are... Let me let me phrase this as gently as possible. <laughs> People who jump on Genji should be uh, banned. <laughs> the very banned? Gentle. Oh, no. Oh, I thought you were going to say euthanized. <laughs> Again, he said he was going to be nice. Yeah. I th as I said, I was being nice. Besides feel, I didn't say what they should be banned from. <laughs> <laughs> Life. <laughs> Shoot them into space. They're banned from Earth. <laughs> I think there was one time somebody jumped on Symmetra immediately. Or not Symmetra, Sombra. Uh, somebody jumped on Sombra immediately and everyone's giving them shit except for me. And I'm just like... Who knows? Maybe it's the one in a million chance someone knows how to use Sombra right, and they did, and I lost it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, they're real. <laughs> I wasn't there, so I don't believe him. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. Bob, do you have anything that isn't Blizzard? <laughs> I really don't. I'm trying to think of things. I, I know really people. Don't. I know people oh, don't man. like the update with uh, Skull of the First Sins on Dark Souls 2. I've I hear some people absolutely hate it. Some people think it's good. So I know that's a contentious one. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't have personal experience. You know what? If, if, if we're going to count stuff, if we're going to count stuff like Skull of the First Sin, where it's like a, it's like a re-release, but you can like pay to upgrade to it. Uh, there's, um, there's a patch they put out. They called it Destiny 2. Uh, <laughs> while it had a really interesting story campaign to it. Uh, they really fucked up the multiplayer and had to. Sp uh, they had to spend like a year and a half uh, fixing it. <laughs> uh, it's good now, but it really it really fucked some shit. Uh, something about esports and three v threes only. Why the fuck was that patch sixty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> that was really confusing. Activision, am I right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Jesus, but yeah, no. Uh, Destiny Two should win this award, even though it's not a fucking patch, <laughs> right? God. That game was... Remember not only all of those things he just mentioned, but the weird mode that was, okay, you need to run this to this point, but you can invade the other team's side of this event? <laughs> yes. What a weird fucking thing. Uh, Field, do you have any non-Blizzard <laughs> games? <laughs> uh, Dark Souls 2, but not Scholar of the First Sin. Okay. At launch, uh, Faith oh, yeah. builds were really good because the because the way spells work in Dark Souls is you it, it's like D and D rules. You have a number of times you can cast a spell, and like you have spell slots based on a, a stat. You can level the stat and have more spell costs. But faith was really good, and then FromSoft decided we have to balance down this single player. So, uh, your big spell called Lightning Spear went from eleven casts per copy to four. <laughs> so you just you just you just went to sleep and then the next day you got up and loaded up your save and it's like my my build is now trash. Yeah. That, I now have to respec my character which in these games is never actually convenient. Dark Souls 2 is the one it is most convenient in and is still a pain in the ass. And is still a pain in the ass cuz uh cuz that respecing your character might might fix your stats. But uh, 
Your build decides all your gear. It doesn't give you all your upgrade shit back. Maybe I want to respec when I learned that I need to level up uh, this stat to make sure that I have iframes when rolling. <laughs> Dark Souls 2 is a great game. It is. I very much enjoyed it. Uh, just, the Blizzard ones. Yeah, I've Blizzard just been staring at a fucking character sheet for Overwatch angry uh, since I threw it to you. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Feel free to keep going. I love talking about Overwatch. Uh, first Blizzard one. Yeah. When mm -hmm. they patched wall walking out of World of Warcraft, that was some real no what? fun allowed shit. Yeah. So it, it launched. So it launched, and for like two years after, it was like two years. Yeah. It was before yeah, it was they patched it. Pretty significant. Uh, you could walk on a wall, Casey, if you held the camera at the right angle. Okay. What it what what would that do harmful? Uh, they apparently they were concerned it would cause uh something wrong with PvP. But uh, I never saw that, ever. I've never heard of that Mo happening either. Mostly people used it to be like, there's an entire, like, town that they made it so you couldn't get to that you can get to with wall walking. There's an entire village of dancing trolls in this one place that you can't get to unless you wall walk. And then they were just like, no, we don't like it. No fun allowed. I was real big into getting uh, uh when when I played World of Warcraft for the first time I was real big into uh getting to places they didn't want you to get to like I got into uh vanilla What the fuck is that place called from the end of Warcraft 3? What was that fucking zone called? They I don't eventually know. made it uh they eventually made it um the Chasm of Silence. <laughs> Hyjal, Mount Hyjal. They eventually made it a, a a zone later, but you could get there was an original version that you could get to, and it was real cool. And there was a bunch of areas like that, and they're like, no, don't don't explore things that we don't want you to get to, even though it, it doesn't matter. Cool. I'm just thinking about the part where it's like it might fuck off PvP, and I'm like, oh, that that reasoning that ruined every every Souls game. And Di and Diablo three. God. And Hearthstone, when they patched out Patron Warrior, which was completely ridiculous, but fuck you, it was fun. Who cares? Uh, I thought of the most meta contender for this category. Mm. Because it's so multi-layered. Tracer, but not in Overwatch in Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> Home, explain it to me. Okay, so Tracer's whole character in Heroes of the Storm is that she was a glass cannon. Um... She has a lot yeah. of reloading mechanics, a lot of rewind stuff, but she had a really nice damage output. And if you were really on top of her in-depth reloading mechanic and the other stuff, you could do some decent damage. Uh, they just took away her ability to do, do, to do damage, so she became worthless. Um, and they were like, what? It's neat enough that she can move and shoot. That's good enough, right? She's she's great right and it's like no you fucking nerfed her so hard she's useless and i stopped playing as her weirdly enough uh sergeant hammer never got nerfed quite as hard as a uh, tracer so i think that's the one time i've played a fucking character in a blizzard game and they didn't just nerf it to fucking hell i oh. came up with some okay yeah what's up uh destiny when they God damn it. when they took out shoot cave yeah when they took out shoot cave because so, some guy was just straight up the uh crying Wojak thing where he's like, no, you can't progress your character by shooting in a K. Ha <laughs> 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 ha, loot go burr. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it was really sad to see that go. And then they also patched out that thing where you could get the boss to fall off a ledge. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, you could get, what was it, the Vault of Glass dude to it just was, run off the edge? Yeah, it was either the Vault of Glass main boss or the next one's main boss. You could just get him to eventually walk her off. Oh, it was really funny. That is that is the best. Yeah. Just the idea. That's a raid boss. Yes. That's supposed to be the hardest, <laughs> that's the hardest content. That's the shit that it's like, this is three hours and and... and <laughs> And if you can't beat it, you can leave and we'll give you a checkpoint, but when weekly reset happens, you've lost your chance. If you... Unless there's a banana, in which case she slips and falls <laughs> off a cliff and you all get credit. But yeah, that's a... That's the thing we're always referencing where like, you can't fool me. Yeah. I'm not gonna be subframed.
<laughs> yeah. I like that. It's like, get away from me. You're trying to trick me. <laughs> I have one that I didn't experience, but I feel like is sort of legendary. Mm. When they completely remit, when they completely changed the entire character progression shit system in a patch of Star Wars Galaxies. Good lord. Ah! Yeah, I heard nothing but hate about that. When it went from, like, this really deep, customizable thing, because the publisher went, only, n nobody's become a Jedi yet. You got, oh, God, we want to, we want to, we want to use Jedi in the marketing, and then made them rip out the entire classless character development thing and put in MMO classes. <laughs> Some people were like, I played this game for years as a traveling musician because there's a musician skill and they took it entirely out. My character <sighs> can do nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad I never got invested in that game. God. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that was some weeks in Overwatch. You just sign in and your character, you just unload your powerful move into a dude and he doesn't give a shit. I'm trying to remember the nerfs they did to D.Va that were just like, what's happening? Oh, man. Yeah, D.Va got reworked a bit. Just a smidge. Just a, just a smidge. <laughs> she now starts outside of her mech. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? You need to earn the mech through battle. <laughs> uh, yes, we've spawned her mech in the middle of the map at all times. <laughs> It's a it's a kill streak reward. The the the, the mech is it, in the enemy base and you have to sneak in. Yeah, that's, that's what they'll do. If it's attack and defense, uh, you will spawn and then you have to make it. It's directly on top of whatever the next point is, and you have to hold E for two seconds before you get inside it. <laughs> yeah. Did uh, anyone else have any major patch stories? Okay, we'll move on. I'm good. Lock the chest wrote in, Hey, Giga Boys, lock the chest here. Who is your favorite villain in a game? Whether it's because they're well-developed and deep or just because they're fun to watch slash fight. Hard mode, no Virgil. Thanks for all the hard work. You're fantastic. Um... Someone else go. The grave mind is real cool. It's it's pretty at least, cool. At least in at least in Halo Two where he rhymes, <laughs> and then in Halo Three where he shows up to be like, "Ha ha, I was teamed up with you for five seconds." Fooled where he you. shows up to go, uh, where he goes up to show, uh, the writers changed between games. Whoa, <laughs> basically, oh, yeah. No. Oh man. Uh. uh also, Monokuma. <laughs> more of the protagonist the uh the the senator in metal gear rising is really enjoyable yeah <laughs> he's so good <laughs> yeah he's really fantastic remember he, he had so many great lines like make america great again <laughs> oh god he's a perfect parody of a politician <laughs> not mm -hmm. a specific politician just the idea of politicians satire is dead <laughs> maybe you know I'm looking at these games and I'm trying to I'm trying to think of one villain that just really stands out as oh man what a what a great villain I should talk about them right now unfortunately I'm looking at Metal Gear Solid 5 oof no uh, <laughs> who's the villain in that Konami? K K K Kojima what a <laughs> lust for revenge <laughs> ooh <laughs> <laughs> um man yeah i don't hmm az talk about that final fantasy 14 villain that makes people mad that carries the the revolver of sorts oh oh okay um that character's name is uh xenos he is the villain of uh final fantasy 14 stormblood he is uh, a part of the evil empire. He has a cool katana. Um, what they did was they wrote a really bad villain, but he's a shonen battle villain, so everyone thinks he's raw, but he also sucks. <laughs> it sounds like you don't like this villain. 
Uh, he rules, but he's also terrible. <laughs> like, every time he's featured, I'm like, this isn't great, but whatever, you're cool. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, put him on my list. Imagine if the didact was literally Frieza and they leaned into it. Yeah, that'd be better. <laughs> I mean, I, I mentioned it on Big Think where they make you do MMO fights against him that are just, you can't win, but you got to at least deal 30%. <laughs> and he's just nuking you with so many different things. Isn't there a part where somebody says he could defeat Bahamut, the thing that nuked the planet? <laughs> yes. Okay, I have a pretty good pick. Uh, what? Wesker from Resident Evil 5. Yeah, that's good. There's a lot about him that makes him a fantastic villain in that one specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. Between the visuals, the voice delivery, uh, very specific line things, uh, and uh, how insanely he he's just consumed by his rage by the end in a way that's really hilarious as he transforms. <laughs> I think that worked out pretty well. I, I wouldn't say it was like masterful villain writing, uh, but he, he was really great. Uh, hopefully Resident Evil 8 has some sort of villain that is as powerful. I, uh, I highly recommend the uh, villain from the third Zero Escape game, Zero Time Dilemma. Uh, the character Zero Two might be the dumbest villain in anything I've ever played. I highly recommend him. Because I can't explain what he does. <laughs> I can't explain it. It's incomprehensible. But it's really good. So you should probably. You, pe people should check that one out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of like some villains I think highly of. And then I'm thinking of some that are in more mystery uh, oriented stuff. So I can't really dive. Um, dive deep. Uh, yeah. Them. You know what? In Yakuza Zero, <laughs> one one of the bad guys in that, uh, Kuze, is a dude you fight like six times, and it's hilarious. Yes. And I love that dude. You, He's you so keep fighting great. him, and you're like, "Come on, why?" The second one involves you know you in a sewer, and he attacks you with a motorcycle, and Kiryu just blocks it. He blocks. He rides down a motorcycle dragging a lead pipe, and Kiryu's strategy is to just take it. <laughs> and um, somehow after that, there's still four <laughs> more fights against him. <sighs> He's literally just, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? That's the character. Imagine the, imagine the warden from Halo 5, but good. <laughs> That's really difficult. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, well, all of these fights last longer than 10 seconds. Oh, weird. That's nothing okay, oh, like oh, the war. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here, here, here's a, here's, here's some. Okay, Dan, imagine a boomer from your retail job. Uh huh. Who picked a fight with you and you beat them up and they just kept following you around for months, even though every time they came at you, you beat their ass. Yeah. Okay. They're literally just furious someone younger than them beat them up. Yeah, okay. No, I'm, I'm seeing it. It's connecting. I'm getting it. Uh, you know who's a really good villain, Bob? Who's that? A uh, guy from an old GRPG. His name was Sephiroth. <laughs> Never really, heard of him. Oh, it's uh, just some PS1 JRPG. Okay. Most people haven't played it, but uh, he was all right. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, the, the family from Resident Evil 7. <laughs> yeah, we still need to go finish that because I, I Every, know nothing about that, but them welcoming to me to the family side. It's it's that level of insane. It, it's dude chops off your fucking hand and then throws a potion at you and tells you to fix it. It's, it was your foot that time. It was your yeah. foot. God, yeah, he took a shovel and just oh god. Oh. <laughs> looking looking forward to eight. Yeah, me too. Um, I was going to bring up Nomen. From right or was only the Enders two. See, I I think Noman's powerful. He is. He's very gross. He exudes a very powerful gross energy. <laughs> but I don't think I can point to anything he says other than the the lines in the intro video they cut off. Yeah, that's all he needs. Uh, Dingo just needs to be angry at him. 
Well, that's true, because that, that, I'm pretty sure that exact line from the intro that they cut off the very end of, all Dingo replies with is, Because <laughs> it's Sony the Enders, too. Excuse me, is there, is there a character named Dingo? Oh, yeah, yeah, Dingo's Dingo, your main character. Dingo Ingrit. Egret. <laughs> it's a very good name. Is it? Uh, there's also Leo Stenbuck, who pilots the Vic Viper. It's very cool. Mm-hmm. Zone of the Enders 2, really great game, except for the parts that you never ever want to replay ever in your life. <laughs> yeah, those parts are kind of bad. <laughs> uh, Shang Tsung. In which game? Uh, the new ones. He's okay. delightful. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's pretty good. I like him. Because <laughs> I was gonna say, if you're if you're talking any of the first two, then yes, I too enjoyed uh, Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, God. just Kano, because after the movie came out and made him Australian, Ed Boon was like, oh, that's real cool. He's Australian for real now forever. <laughs> I liked the villain of Tales of Berseria, who is um, Artorius, a dude whose uh, dominant hand is crippled, so he has to use his left arm, and he's still stronger than basically anyone. <laughs> And he's just like the holy warrior character. Yeah, there's a one of one of his like generals is like has like a magic spell on him, so he's basically always under 100 times Earth's gravity. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm doing this because I got to get ripped to fight Artorius." <laughs> <laughs> um, the magma spider in Double May Cry One. He has a surprising amount of character. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> yeah. all of the dudes in Devil May Cry 1 are really resilient and keep coming back and have a lot of personality. It's weird. Yeah, like it's more so than even later entries. I, it's strange. It's pretty great, though. <laughs> like even Mundus, he only has like the one fight at the end, but you can see him throughout the game and he's menacing yeah. in just that cheesy way. Yeah, yeah. So I think it worked. How about Moon Dis from DMC the DMC? (laughs) Who? He controls the world with debt. Yes. Wow. Deep. (laughs) It was human greed. That was the real problem. The world is now his bitch. That dude in the Resident Evil Three remake with like the Russian dude. That dude's great. (laughs) (laughs) Mostly when he uh, kills Carl. When when you fail that QTE, (laughs) he's the best villain of all time. When he when you do that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, we're gonna move on. (laughs) Uh, Next question comes from Big Nerd Sam. Dear Next Gen Giga Boys, as Next Gen crawls forward, and I scrambled to find a big and tall denim jacket to wear at the PS5 launch. What fun stories do you have about your transition into the next generation? When I went from the N64 to the GameCube, my brother mistakenly believed that Super Smash Bros. Melee didn't have grabs. He couldn't see the Indigo Z button on the purple controller. (laughs) (laughs) He also couldn't figure out... uh block and attack okay so here's <laughs> hey bob those are different colors and much more obvious but uh well i'm my gun I'm, I'm gonna be honest most people when they get their hands on a gamecube controller don't notice the z button so i could totally see it's a brand new console and you can't find it yeah it's only on one, one side i get it it's only on one side it was the same it, it's roughly it's the same small. color yes it is it's it is so sm- tiny and then the shoulder button behind it is approximately seven times as big. <laughs> uh, so this is a story no, I like to but tell. But there's no other buttons on the face buttons, as you know. There's a GameCube controller has no real buttons on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, this is a story I like to tell. Uh, I think it's fun to tell. I'm not sure if it was fun Uh-oh. in the moment, but Bob appreciates me telling it. So my brother got an Xbox original. <laughs> It was very oh, no. close to launch. It was like maybe two months la- later, maybe six. It was really close to launch, and we were all so excited. Me, Bob, other people we know. It's just like, yeah, we're going to have a fucking Xbox, and we're going to be able to play Halo. My brother refused to buy Halo, bought 
Oh, fuck. I actually blanked on the name. Hunters the Reckoning. Hunters the Reckoning. Hunters oh, God, <laughs> the Reckoning. You guys know that hit fucking launch title for the Xbox original, Hunters the Reckoning? Has anyone other than me and Bob on this podcast even fucking seen Hunters the Reckoning? I think you've no. shown us Hunters the Reckoning before because you're psychotic. You've mentioned it because I always get it confused with Hunted the Demon's Forge. That's true. And that came up on an earlier big thing, but I never get tired of how insane it was that my brother bought an Xbox that close to launch. Everyone but him was like, oh shit, yeah, Halo's pretty hype. And he's like, this. <laughs> I think that your brother's insane, insane reasoning uh -huh. was I, we rented, he rented Halo. Yeah. He beat it. Mm -hmm. So he didn't want to buy it because he'd already beaten that game. <laughs> Even though it has multiplayer. I know! <laughs> I know that the whole point is playing multiplayer and doing the harder difficulties, but I don't think that could get through to him. I'm pretty fucking sure my brother has played maybe three levels of Hunter's The Reckoning. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Hunter The Reckoning, which doesn't make sense. It's a four-player game. Uh Oh, He's, well, Dan, it's called a Hunter the Reckoning because it's actually a fucking tie-in to Vampire Colon the Masquerade. It's the Vampire Hunter version of the game. Mm. Is he lying? I can't tell. I'm not. That sounds real. There's no fucking way. It, it, it's based on the, table, the tabletop game Hunter the Reckoning. It's got to be cool. It's got a 79 on Metacritic. It got an 8 out of 10 from Yahoo. Adam uh, Navarro reviewed it once. You mean Alex? I'll check. The, uh, yeah, it's Alex Navarro. Or Alex. Wait, of course, I'm he gonna got find it. I'm gonna find it while we talk. But yeah, uh, Hunter the Reckoning. Weirdly enough, of all the Xbox original games, that game is on the 4K back compat list. Oh man, they know. They, oh yeah, they know, man. Hunter the Reckoning. That's where it's at. I guess. <sighs> uh, Bob. Oh, uh, you know what? Similar story, but the karma goes in a completely different uh, direction. Uh, so we, a lot of us, uh, a lot of my friends and my brother and uh, some of his friends bought a PSP at launch. I talked Handsome Joe into <laughs> buying Untold Legends. And he goes, you sure about this, Dan? You sure I should get this game? And I'm like, yeah, IGN, IGN gave it an 8 out of 10. They did not. <laughs> They gave it like a six or some shit. That game is terrible. It runs at like 15 frames per second, takes forever to load, is a terrible top-down hack and slash, so you can see why it and Hunter the Reckoning are both, you know, in the same vector in my brain. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's, uh, I don't think he's ever forgiven me. <laughs> yeah, Dan was, for some reason, trying to talk me and Handsome Joe into getting this so he could play it as a group. <laughs> yeah, we were going to play it as a group, but then Handsome Joe bought it, Bob didn't buy it, and uh, <laughs> then we saw it was bad, so then <laughs> neither of us bought it, and Handsome Joe was the only one who bought Untold Legends for 40 fucking dollars. <laughs> Why are you such an antagonist? <laughs> I didn't know. I misremembered. <laughs> now, I had to look it up. Uh, Hunter the Reckoning reviewed by Giancarlo Veronini. <laughs> oh. That's, like, for GameSpot? Yes. I think I've heard of him once or twice. I don't actually... Uh... Hmm. I don't know who this person is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the Untold Legend review from IGN real quick just to see what it actually got, because I, I told him it was, like, a 9 out of 10. You're right. At bare minimum, the lowest number I could have told him it was was, like, an 8 out of 10. I'm pretty sure I told him 9 out of 10. They gave it a 7.6. I hate this because these are reruns. Like, I've heard this exact story. I've heard this exact... I'm going to check what the review is now. Yes. I yeah. Feel yeah, we've been through all this. This is the worst. As it turns out, when people write in similar questions. Anyway, uh, KZ, do you have any fun next-gen stories? Uh, <laughs> uh, no. I will put in here, uh, you don't have to edit it in, but I have a picture of that reviewer uh, behind in front of Devil May Cry 2. <laughs> and I don't know why that's funny to me, but there you go. Um, yeah, I don't think anything special, because I never opted in early on any console. Uh, Field, you know, no, no money. Uh, Field, do you have any fun next-gen stories? Uh, when, I, when I got a PlayStation, I didn't know what the fuck a memory card was. 
So that was a bad time, especially since I got it with Final with two games, the two RPGs. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Uh, the next one was uh, a friend also didn't have a memory card and uh, <laughs> uh, they played through the entire first disc of Metal Gear Solid. Oh. Then got to switching discs and didn't know what to do. Oh. And then their little brother just turned the power off because he thought that's what you were supposed to do. Oh, that's not... <sighs> that's not good. Because it says switch discs. Why would you... He didn't think you had to, had to stay on. Oh, my I just, God. I just remember he wasn't... And my friend wasn't fast enough to react as his younger brother, like, popped up and just hit the power button. <sighs> I fucking... God, that's terrible. <laughs> <sighs> it's oh. the same friend as uh, Cornbread Pockets? No. Oh. I, uh... <sighs> I, I spent the first couple weeks with the PlayStation 1 only having the demo disc. Uh, and, then, and then it became the choice of, hey, uh, you got this little bit of allowance or whatever, you can, you can buy something for your PS1, what do you want to buy? And I was like, well, this demo disc has a Tekken demo, and a game costs more than a controller. So what if we buy this controller for the PlayStation 1 and then we can play this Tekken demo and then eventually get another game for us to play. So we buy the we buy a second controller. That demo doesn't work with two players. God, I mm, oh, that sucks oh, so bad. Oh, <laughs> that sucks oh. so fucking bad. Uh I need I need a positive fun next gen story. I don't even know. Uh I, I got one. Sure, go ahead. Um before I got the PS2, you rented uh Resident Evil Code Veronica. <laughs> yeah. We played one maybe 5 minutes of that game and then played that Double May Cry 1 demo repeatedly. Oh yeah, for like 3 hours <laughs> at least. <laughs> And it was the funniest thing because we were like talking about returning Code Veronica because we disliked it that much. And then when we played the demo, we were like, uh, it's not a total loss. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was pretty good. I, uh... <laughs> I'm coming up with for the Wii is <laughs> we played Virtual Console more than the get that's anything for the new system. Yeah, when you put your hands on the, like the first time you get your hand on a Wiimote and you realize how it works and you go, oh, it just constantly loses tracking because yeah. the camera can't see the infrared yeah. oh no right it was such a disappointment <laughs> yeah because like you hear about them using it on stage and shit and it sounds magical and then you get in your home and then things are bad and the tennis game doesn't track your hand at all Ugh. and the golf game is miserable in Wii Sports that that golf game is terrible yeah. I don't know a single human who's been like oh this is great this is goat Meanwhile, the bowling game's so good, it's showing up in yet another fucking game with the Switch thing. The Clubhouse games? Or Thank whatever. God. <laughs> yep. Needs to escape. Make sure to get your Joy-Cons for it. Oh, yeah. You gotta use your Joy-Cons. You were saying it forces that for online for everything? It forces it any time you play with multiple people. That's fucking weird. I so mean. if you change, you change to multiplayer, previews have said uh, the Pro Controller immediately turns off. Man, Nintendo really shouldn't have made the Switch able to do that. <laughs> I, I, I agree with them as I pay $100 to get a new set of Joy-Cons. <sighs> Oof. 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 Um, <laughs> let's see. I'll be here Saturday. <laughs> uh, it was the PSP, and everyone hacked the PSP. It was pretty cool playing through most of Zelda 2 on my PSP for the first time ever. I got six temples in. That was a really great time. Having a portable thing that was capable of doing a full console experience was really amazing in a lot of ways. But I don't have any unique uh. stories. It's just like Luminous is a really great and fun game with streaming audio and great visuals. These are cool things. Untold Legends is Somber it. Tapestry. <laughs> me, uh, me and Agro playing Ridge Racer in science class was pretty great. Oh yeah, no, Ridge Racer's great. Uh, we had a thing called the Ridge Racer Proposal 
<laughs> wherein Agro was so tired what? of us shit talking how bad he is at Ridge Racer that he was like, do you want to do this? Do you want to do the Ridge Racer proposal? Which was his way of saying, do you want me to beat the shit out of you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, no. So if you've ever heard him reference the Ridge Racer proposal and content, that is what he's implying. <laughs> Agro, if you're listening, please uh, t tweet at us to co-sign this story. <laughs> yeah, no, it's real. Was he the one who bark or who uh, took the term uh, "rage racist"? Yes, <laughs> I think the one time he won, he was like, "Finally, I am the ridge racist," and I'm like, "I don't think you want to say that." <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, I wouldn't say the time we bought a PS3 after staying in line for it for a whole day and then finding out the cross media bar doesn't pop up when you're in the fucking game was fun. I wouldn't <laughs> say that was fun at all. Uh, then opening the store in the web browser <laughs> and my mind melts. I think that was a positive thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was certainly confusing. Even the Xbox original had a store. <laughs> then getting like you could you could go I want to buy DLC and then it goes to like some weird Xbox Live themed store not right. a web browser. <laughs> I got an Xbox 360 and 2 weeks later it red ringed. Oh, that's a that's, that's a very typical story. That's oh. really bad. It's okay. I got to continue playing uh, Dead Rising, which I couldn't read any of the text cuz I was on a standard deaf TV. I didn't get to uh play that for uh, two and a half months. I know that feeling. Uh, I didn't even own a PS3 at launch. It was uh, Zeon's PS3. <laughs> so I waited in line for someone else's PS3. And it was mostly hooked up to their TV. Was it worth it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, that mm -hmm. played Tony Hawk Project 8, which to date is still the best Tony Hawk game. So I'm just remembering getting Genji and then hitting a pot and the, the whole the frame rate just tanked to 10 or that five. was man th nothing was as sobering as getting a ps3 at launch nothing ever <laughs> nothing ever just rips the fucking wool off of your eyes like oh man check out genji it's a sequel to a ps2 game it looks so cool hits one pot frame rate shits its pants game is now in slow motion like it's a fucking matrix sequence like oh man so many things uh yeah, that's 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 about it from us. I think we have time for one more question. Jack C writes in, "Hello, four horsemen of the OLED apocalypse." Looking back at a list of games I used to own, I noticed the team-based shooter Brink was among <laughs> them. <laughs> and despite its many shortcomings, I thought the concept of a multiplayer parkour shooter was ahead of its time and could really take off well. So I ask you all this. What are some games you like, but nobody else does? <laughs> uh, I'm just going to opening salvo. Bunny must die. Uh, so I, I expected the bouncer. No, everybody yeah, loves the bouncer. Like, I hate you. I hate you because you found plenty of people that do. I, I like I like bunny must die. <laughs> I feel like bunny must die uh, is pretty jank in a way that's not forgiven like Dark Souls. So... Uh, most people don't. Uh, like no one's it. heard of Bunny Must Die, and the people that have have been positive on it. Hey, Bob, you've been positive on it. Not entirely, no. <laughs> it's okay, Bob. Kate. Not liking something, I'm shocked. Next thing you're gonna tell me is that he likes the water. Uh, it's okay. Casey's gonna give that game a chance on his live stream. <laughs> Uh, Bob, do you have any games that you like that nobody else does? Um, hello, I, welcome to our new segment, mid action games on the PS2. Right, I know. I'm like, I, there are several I could bullshit <laughs> there. Nano Breaker, Samurai Western, Chaos Legion. Bob, go to your tw go to your Twitter. Look at your pin tweet. <laughs> What is Bob's pin tweet on Twitter? One moment. It's the tier list of action games <laughs> that he did six months ago. I, I, ah! I should I should look at that. That has some good ones. Shinobi yeah, PS2 to is one of my favorite look. games. Is, yeah, Shinobi on PS2 is really great. Um, I, while I'm looking at this, I want to bring up my story about the bouncer. I can tell now they don't work at GameStop. <laughs> Oh no! Not the bouncer. I'm sorry, Brink. Brink. Ah, that makes more sense. That's, oh. that's disappointing. That what a downgrade. 
Um, mm. But go ahead. Break was my first time experiencing a game that was returned so massively in the first day that the company didn't know what to do. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the oh, the traded price dropped in that fashion that I'd seen anything ever do. <laughs> I... <laughs> What are it we was, talking? What are we talking? I need numbers. I can't remember <laughs> the numbers right now, but usually it says like at least half the price of the game. I know that by the end of week one of that being out, it was under $15. Holy shit. Ooh. <laughs> so, that, so that's like more than half of people who bought it brought yeah. it back. Yeah, no. I. Uh, it was probably more like 90% of people who bought it brought it back. <laughs> it was insane. Like that was the most hate I'd seen uh, like early on and i don't feel like i got another experience like that until like last year with anthem and stuff yeah <laughs> um god there was one are you, homecoming. Trying, are you telling me that anthem is this generation's brink yeah anthem yeah, i mean <laughs> what's that it's home not homecoming but that it has home, home the, front home, home front. front home front brink and then anthem <laughs> what about syndicate not that didn't see as much sales or returns wow um I'd, I'd like to point out that there are several uh, used, like new, copies of Brink available on Amazon for 26 cents. Uh, feel, so here's the thing. We used to ship out, like, fun prizes to viewers, like we did giveaways for the Mega Man cereal. Uh, Ooh, they copy of Brink? Uh, yeah, we have several, actually, because they zeroed out the <laughs> price at GameStop. Bob took them home for free. <laughs> yeah. I'm. I, there is a copy of Brink with an arms reaching me right now as I record this. <laughs> why? <laughs> why not? Why? What do you mean why? why it's in the stack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but it is for games I I like and nobody else does. Let's see. I'm looking my switch here list now. Otogi, <laughs> one, two. They're great. <laughs> Going back to Nightshade, I enjoyed that more than I remembered. Yeah, no, that was that was all right. I don't feel like a lot of people even know about Shinobi or Nightshade. Um, uh, there's Chaos Legion, Bob. Do you want to talk about Chaos Legion? Chaos Legion <sighs> isn't good. No, it, it is. It, it really is really bad. I I enjoyed it, but it's like in this way of just grinding. <laughs> it's not good. Um, surprisingly, Oni, Oni Chambara, the PS3 or sorry, PS4 one is actually pretty good. Um, if you're gonna try one of those games, try that one. Yeah, go ahead and move on for me. I, 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 I think KZ's silent because of the picture I posted to Twitter. Oh, oh no! I, I'm, I'm thumbing through a disc <laughs> wallet. Oh my god, Dan! You son of a bitch! I told you it was with the arms <laughs> reach. Oh my god, Dan! This is the best mailbag we've done in a while. Uh, <laughs> just had to. Nice game, bro. <laughs> oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> so I'm trying to look in here. I'm looking at this small collection of PS2 games I got when I started collecting them again a couple of years ago. Let's see. What what would I say people would think is bad? No, that's fine. That's a collection. Uh, Dirge of Cerberus, uh, that works. Uh, <laughs> let's see. They might say it's bad. Yeah, maybe. Who just, knows? Just Curious maybe. to uh, a, a, anyone who has a anyone who has a small brain. Uh, Robotech Battle Cry. I enjoyed that game. I thought that was all right. <laughs> it, it's better than I expected. I had no idea what a Robotech was, so I just knew that was a game, and I played it and went, "Oh, this is all right." Uh. I'm struggling to think of just things that people just go that are just unpopular that I'm like, eh, see, I that, like this. That's a complicated thing, because as you pointed out earlier, like most people don't know what Bunny Must Die is. So is it that mm -hmm. most people think it's bad or that it's just unpopular? Because, man, let me tell you about sports champions on the PlayStation Move. That is a really good game. But fucking nobody knows what that game looks like or is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to think of games that I think have a bad reputation that I liked. Uh, I don't know. I like Dark Souls 2. It was the first one of those that I played. 
<laughs> What's a game you like that no one else likes, KZ? I don't know. Dark Souls. People dislike that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Two is the one people seem to not like. I know, so, I know. So I at know. least there's yeah. that. But then he paired it with that statement of my first one, and it's like, well, that's always the case when you like it. <laughs> it, it must, it must be a well hated thing. I've, I've seen there, there are dozens upon dozens of video essays about it. Yeah, it's Dark Souls. So, <laughs> yes. Um, man, I'm struggling. Yeah, it's hard for me because my taste is immaculate. <laughs> so it's hard to really hammer down something that that the people are just wrong on. <laughs> I like Makai Kingdom a lot. I don't know if that's disliked in the fan base of the the uh, Nipponichi games. Is that the one with the book? Yes. Yeah. I I have not played that. I just you know I just know that he's in he's in all he's in the Disgaea games. The the badass I don't think freaking it's overlord. Disliked. Game. I think more. I think people more dislike um Phantom Brave. Phantom Brave, the one right before it that has like similar mechanics. Yeah, I don't like just Phantom Brave as much as Makai Kingdom, but I like its mechanics. It just they fleshed them out way better in Makai. And the story is trying to be really sad in uh, Phantom Brave, and it does not work. I feel like any hate that Makai Kingdom gets is more because the game lies to you with what its presentation is going to be like from the first second. How so? Or you, uh, you get. If you remember, you get like this really cool looking scene of Zeta with like a big sprite walking through a background before he gets turned into a book. Yeah. And and then like every single scene after that uses the tiny little in-game sprites. Yeah, it's true. They they just had a they really blew their budget on the opening that looked mar a, a little better than the rest of the game. <laughs> I'll look at Bob's list and uh because I'm sure there'll be something <laughs> I can think of in there. <laughs> uh, Ninja Blade. I think Ninja Blade is hilarious. I think it has one of the most ridiculous stories I've ever seen. Mm. It also has uh, the president from Metal Wolf Chaos before he becomes president because Ninja Blade and Metal Wolf are in the same continuity. What? <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like a secret agent. That's that's really good. <laughs> And it's implied, it's very strongly implied that, yeah, Metal Wolf just happens a couple years later. Oh my god. Uh, uh, I've, I don't know if this is disliked, but I've never heard another human being mention it. And apparently the game sold really poorly. So, uh, Guardians Crusade on the PS1. I'm trying to remember what that game is. It is a JRPG where you play as a very generic looking night kid and you have a horrifying little pink baby with you. Oh, <laughs> and and the horrible pink baby can uh, transform into various shapes based on what you feed it and how you treat it. God, this is really weird looking. Yeah, uh, that's uh, strange. Uh, I liked it a lot when I put it's it's very odd. It's very simple, mm -hmm. but but it was weird. It was very ambitious because on PS1, it did not have like a world map. It just had an up like an open world. That's cool. It had a lot of neat stuff like that. Also, I remember it being really hard, but I may have just been 12. You never know. Sometimes you're just 12. <laughs> especially, especially with JRPGs where I didn't figure out what strategy was until I was 24. <laughs> it's like, the, number, the, the numbers on my attack are higher. That means I'm stronger. I, uh, for me, a lot of the time, it's less like publicly known for being bad and people disliking and more of just I, I like a lot of things that people have never heard of um, like Tecmo's Deception as a series you know most people haven't played one of those uh, Dragon Seeds shit like that just you know shit that's a bit more like people looked at it and passed over it and don't care and uh, why did aggro photoshop brink the Disney movie into my Disney hand. Disney Channel original movie, the epic film Go Team Pup and Suds. <sighs> okay, and that's how you know it's time to close down this episode of Big Thing Mailbag. <laughs> this is great. All the people on my timeline like it, including hashtag MILF Pussy for Jesus. Thanks thank for listening, everybody. Thank you for writing in. Have a good one.
<laughs> this Gigaboots video was brought to you by the arcane powers of our executive producers. Esme, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Red Blaze 27, and 32X Wen. Thank you very much to our powerful executive producers. And also these guys. If you like this video and want to lend us your power, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.